When Netflix treated me to a little preview of Afterlife of the Party, I saw a beautiful young woman on the poster. I saw some angel wings, saw some neon, saw some fun. She has a you know martini glass in the hand or an apple teeny or something. And I thought to myself, this will be terrible, but maybe it'll also be fun terrible. You know, like watching reruns of Saved by the Bell or Victorious. There's enough going on, enough spice in the mix to keep you interested. I've never seen Victorious, but I'm told that that's what the woman Victoria Justice is from. She's back, baby. Victoria Justice plays Cassie, who's just about to turn 25. And on the eve of her birthday, she wants to party like there's no tomorrow. Because in her case, there isn't. <laughs> her best friend Lisa tags along almost by force at this point because she's really not interested in the party scene anymore. She's more into science and books and nerdy stuff like growing up and getting a job. Yuck. The party they go to. Oh man. It had like seven or eight people in the club. It looked pretty wild for the five minutes they were there. Five minutes might be generous. There's really no partying in this film. I know it's called Afterlife of the Party. There's no party. Uh, it's, it's very inconsequential. Cassie and Lisa get in a bad fight and realize we're not third graders anymore. Things have changed. Unfortunate timing as Cassie dies that very night in a horrifically embarrassing way. On the edge of a toilet seat. <laughs> it's the only humor in the entire film. I got a good 45 minutes into it before I had to shut it off for the night. And then I decided, you know what, Adam, you haven't platinumed Horizon yet. And the new one's coming out in a few months. Let's get on it. So I was playing and I had it on my laptop next to me to finish out the last, you know, 40 minutes or so. That was a good way to watch it. Netflix is an interesting beast because not only are they the top shelf rentals of an old blockbuster where they put the crappy knockoff films that aren't good, but it's also a Hallmark video. We, we shit out so many of these generic, lame films for, you know, teenagers and moms that it's, it's almost unbearable. And yet, for some reason, I hate myself just the right amount to watch them. This is a Hallmark movie like no other, so for you Karens out there, buckle up. You're in for a really boring, lame-ass ride that you'll probably enjoy. There's no real swearing, there's no real action, there's no real partying. There's just a lot of people standing around talking in rooms, usually one-on-one. -on -one. Occasionally we'll be treated to four or five people talking. <laughs> Those are the scenes that really wow me. Let me sprinkle in a little bit more of the plot. Casey's dead, right? She goes to Limbo. It's a place between heaven and hell. She has a guardian angel, British of course, because that, they just sound better. They sound more intelligent. And since this plot is dumber than a box of rocks, you're going to need that British charm to hang on. Here's how heaven works, which has always eluded me to begin with, but we'll set that aside. Casey has to make amends because she's a shit person. She's actually not though. Victoria Justice is super lovable, super charming. Often though, disingenuous. She feels like she's reading the script more than acting out the scene. It's okay. We get plenty of costume changes from her that I, I was distracted enough by her beauty to notice the acting too much. She has to make amends with three individuals, Lisa, her father, and her estranged mom. If she accomplishes this mission impossible, she gets to go to The Good Place, which reminds me, The Good Place is a far better watch. It's a, it's a six or seven seasons, definitely worth your time and investment. I, I, I really enjoyed that one. Back to this, she can go to the good place if she gets her mission completed, or she's going down to the bad place. And for some reason, there's a counter on this. God's kind of an asshole. He's like, you have 24 days and you're done. I don't remember what the timer is at. I think it's 24 days or something like that, 30. It's, arb it's just arbitrary nonsense. But yeah, she'll go to hell. And from what I can tell from Casey, she's really done very little wrong in her life. So to be chilling down in hell with the Nazis seems like a bridge too far. Although the guardian angel says there's tears of hell. So maybe she's only tortured like a slight amount for eternity instead of just like every second of every day. Visually, it's nothing insulting. The budget's low, but it's not terrible. It's not embarrassing. The music, however, is. Uh, we're treated to an artist who I've never heard of. I think he was created just for this film. I hope he was created just for this film. His music's awful. Cassie and Lisa celebrate his entire catalog, though. They're all about his music, especially the same song repeated at nauseum. At one point, she plays it on, I believe, Google. There, there's a lot of Google ads here. Um, and then it just kind of trails off in the background while they're talking, which is a nice feature I didn't know you could do with Google Home. Just be like, okay, Google, play this song. And then since it's always listening and spying on you in your conversations, it's like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and just fade out. I'm just going to turn this down. 
What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? It's not terribly long. I think it's an hour 45 or something. So that that's okay. It's boring to an excruciating level. There, there's really nothing going on in this movie outside of these conversations constantly. Now, I personally don't believe in ghosts or spirits. This didn't win me over. So Cassie's dead, gets to go back to Earth in her human form body and gets to do an outfit change every day. That's one of the rules they actually tell her. You get one wardrobe change a day. Why? What kind of a weird nonsense rule is that? What if she wants to just, boom. She can apparate Harry Potter style whenever she wants. And man, the director loves that. She uses this tactic over and over and over and the joke was never funny but they keep insisting it is. Lisa's about to wipe her ass from taking a shit and oh my God, ah! that actually never happens. That would be far too exciting. It's almost always Lisa just kind of walking and then she's there. For that matter, how does Casey even pinpoint these people where they're at at all times? Does she have some super sensibility because she never mentions it? On top of that, she has no direction as far as how she can communicate with these people. She's just thrown to the wolves on this. Fortunately, Cassie's crafty, and she figures out a way to communicate with her best friend via song. Yeah, that, that one song that I mentioned before. It's a good song. I hate myself. Pop, she can be seen by Lisa. And it goes further than that. And I don't think this was song related. This was just something she could always do. Um, but she decides to start doing it later in the film, which is manipulate physical properties in the real world. And I'm not just talking about like moving a napkin a little. No, she can pick up anything do anything she wants so what's stopping her from just writing a note hey this is cassie like in real time like holding it up floating in front of the person like look i'm a ghost i'm dead i'm your daughter stop being a dick love cassie you know why not why not record yourself on video hi i'm i'm an angel in training i need to go to heaven so please help me out Lisa's really into the guy a couple doors down in the apartment complex, but she's too chicken to do anything about it. Cassie's on the job. What she does is a bit of a B and E. Breaks into both apartments, starts putting things all over the floor, turning on the music, writing little notes. It's really bizarre and creepy, and neither of these two airheads really think about it. The future boyfriend wakes up like, <laughs> What? Why is this here? Why is there a trail on my floor leading to this and what? Who did this? Well, I'm not gonna think about this any longer. That was enough questioning. On with my day. What? Someone broke into your house, dude, and laid a trail out. You're not gonna take five seconds to look into this? <laughs> the last thing I have to point out is when she originally arrives in limbo and she's told that if she doesn't make amends with these people and fix their lives and her own, I, I guess, she's gonna go to hell. Her first reaction is, oh, I have to do this. Oh, this is gonna be so difficult. You could go to hell. You could be tortured for all eternity. And you're worried about the difficulty of the task? To talk to three people that you know already? What? I would have so many questions for the angel. Like, why am I going to hell to begin with? That would be a good start. Well, there you have it, Afterlife of the Party. It came, it went, no one will ever think about this film again. Hey, maybe you hate yourself as much as I do and you checked it out on Netflix. Let me know in the comments or just comment because you appreciate a good review.